We'll continue using our dog glass to see how we can make a copy of an object. So that's what this prompt says, that let's copy a dog. So we've got dog, dog eight equals dog six. This is not a good way to make a copy of a dog. Remember, there's only one dog in this situation. And both dog eight and dog six as identifiers are referring to the exact same dog in memory. You don't see the word new anywhere. So it's two identifiers referring to the exact same dog. There's only one dog here. That's not a copy of a dog. But what if we could create a new dog that's exactly the same characteristics as another dog? Look at these dog constructors. They, the empty one, the one with the string, one with the double, one with five characteristics. How about if we make a dog constructor that takes a dog? So here's public dog as a constructor with one parameter, and it's a dog. I'll call it dog D. So we have a constructor to make a new dog using another dog. That's dog D. So I'll make breed equal D dot breed. Remember, these are both dogs. D is a dog, and I'm in a dog class right now, so they can have direct access to each other's fields. So I will set it up so that this dog gets all the characteristics, the attributes, the instance variable values, as the dog that is the parameter, which again is dog D. We've got five of those, getting all five of them in. Is psychic is D dot is psychic. We'll directly access that field from the parameter dog. And of course, we have to make the number of dogs go up by one from when we learned about having static variables. That is a copy constructor. And the parameter is the dog we want to make a copy of. We take that dog D and generate a new dog with all those characteristics. So let's change our bad way that we tried earlier and utilize the copy constructor that we just wrote. So now dog dog 8 equals a new dog and in parentheses dog 6. That's a dog argument. Good. We have a constructor ready with a dog parameter. That dog argument can go park itself in that parameter spot, and then dog8 will be a new dog. That will give us two dogs with the same values instead of two references to the exact same dog. Let's check it out with a two-string method. Dog6 will look like this. We'll use its two-string method to see all of its characteristics. And we'll also check out dog8 to see if we got an equivalent copy. We'll go back to the dog class and save it. I forgot to do that before. That would have been a disaster. And let's get to that part of the program. And dog six, a Labrador, 60.1, seven toys, brown fur color. It is psychic. Same thing for dog eight. Looks like we did get a copy, which is what we wanted. And they are two different dogs. Well, not only is it handy to have a copy constructor, but it's also handy to have a way for a dog to return a copy of itself. We're going to make a copy method. So this will be public dog because it will return a dog. If it's going to return a copy of a dog of itself, then the value it returns is a dog. And I'll call this copy. So I'll declare a dog to return. I'll call it return dog. equals new dog and this this is self-referential it means this current dog so whatever dog I have right now will go to the constructor the one we just wrote that takes a dog argument and that will give us a copy a new copy in fact once again this is self-referential to this very dog so that will help it return a copy of it if we use 
return return dog. If you're not sure about that, you might pause and take a look and think about it. Now let's try this copy method. Again, I'll have a prompt to display that that's what we're going to do. I'll have dog, dog9, equal dog7.copy. So dog7 will just make a copy of itself, and that's what dog9 will equal. Remember, our copy method has the keyword new inside there, so that will generate a different dog in memory. Let's see if we actually get equivalent dogs. So we'll display the characteristics of dog9 and also the characteristics of dog7. And we'll run the program. And they do in fact have the same characteristics. Dog9 became a copy of dog7 and they are two different dogs, not the same dog. We can actually significantly cut down this code. I know it's only two lines, but we can make it just one line of code inside this copy method. And it's often what you really need in any copy method that you make. So I'll comment out the two lines we had and turn them into one. I'll just say to return new dog, which is our copy constructor, and then send it this which is self-referential. I'll send that constructor this dog so it generates a copy of itself. And everything is still working just fine. So again, that this goes to the dog constructor we had as a copy constructor and it's copying this current dog. We'll scroll up and you'll see that right there. Again, we use that copy constructor. Take a look at these constructors. We've got five things that we initialize in public dog, public dog with a string, public dog with a weight. Then we have this public dog with string, double int, string, boolean. And the copy constructor is a little different story there. We do have some initializing going on, but it's not using all these same values of spaniel, 11.3, etc. All of them have these five lines of code in them. To make a chain of constructors, find the constructor with the longest amount of arguments that we're going to use that are all in common. That bottom one takes five arguments. I'm going to come up here to public dog, which has no arguments, and use the one with five arguments, with this. That's going to call the constructor for this object, which is a dog, and I'm going to use five arguments, which will force it to go to the constructor that takes five arguments. Again, this is self-referential to this dog, so it's going to go to that constructor. And I'll send it the five things in order that that five argument constructor expects. The dog breed comes first, its weight second, the number of toys third, its fur color fourth, and its psychic abilities fifth. I don't need any of those other lines of code now, because we're chaining these constructors together. In this no argument constructor, it will call another constructor, the one that takes five arguments. So it's kind of a chain reaction. Once again, this is self-referential to this dog. So that dog constructor has five arguments. So back in our woof application, dog one, dog two, and dog three all are created with no arguments. So what happens is they're going to go to our new argument constructor, which then chains to the argument, the five argument constructor, and everything works out. We still got those dogs at the top if you looked when we ran the program. Let's go to the constructor that takes one argument that is a string. Well, we can still chain it to our constructor that takes five arguments. It will look very similar to the one we already did, but we're not going to use the default of Spaniel because we know what breed we want. It's the parameter, BRD. So in that first spot, I'll put BRD, comma, all our other default values, 11.2 for weight, 3 for the number of toys, 
brown for the fur color, and false for its psychic ability. So when we use this constructor, it will now take itself all the information and call the constructor with five arguments, sending it BRD and also our other four default values. We'll have to write a little more code to test it out because nowhere have we just declared a dog with just a breed. So we'll test one of these chain constructors. We'll test the one where we send it an argument with a, just one string, and that string is the breed of the dog. So dog10 is a new dog, and we'll have it be a collie. That's in quotation marks. It's a string. And then I'll copy and paste this two-string stuff and I'll change it to dog10, and we'll see the characteristics of dog10. And we'll run the program, get ourselves down to dog10, and it is a collie, and then it has all our other default values. So it did work. It went first to this constructor that took the string argument, but then that went down to the constructor that takes five arguments. I'll leave you the opportunity to do the same thing with the dog constructor that has weight as a double for its parameter. See if you can make that chain to the dog constructor that takes five arguments.